Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, I'm going to talk about building animatronics with NURBS, mostly NURBS live book. Um, since we're at the Computer History Museum, I thought I would start with a quote from someone I find inspiring, who is Dr. Christine Darden. Um, she, was, uh, she is a mathematician, aeronautical engineer, um, who worked on the supersonic, studying the supersonic boom. Um, she was one of the, the pool of human computers um, that performed calculations to um, help the space program in segregated offices, and was the first black woman to be um, promoted to the highest level of civil service at Langley. And I read this interview with her where she mentioned that when she was a kid, her mom gave her a talking doll, and her first impulse was to cut it open and see how it talked. And I just love this story, um, personally, as a reminder for the importance of creativity, and also because I have a five-year-old, and it's a good reminder that when my kids cut into things, like, you know, it's a good thing. <laughs> Um, so real quick, it would be great if you could just really quick raise your hand um, if you work with embedded systems, just so I can, okay, sweet. Nerves, uh, Nerves Lifebook, does anyone use Nerves Lifebook? Awesome. Um, if you use the soldering irons, okay, more, more of that. And then um, if you like puppets, <laughs> yay, because it's going to be all puppet gifts today. So. Um, real quick, I just, I'm going to talk about uh, why I did this, a little bit of overview of my kind of thoughts of how I thought through puppets and electronics, um, and then talk about combining it with NERV's live book. So I, like Sophie mentioned, I wanted to learn Elixir and I wanted a project to work on. Um, and as she also mentioned, my mom's puppeteer, I grew up doing this professionally since I was very young, so I knew a lot of the techniques with it and I kind of missed it. Uh, and also I studied physics in college, <laughs> this is me doing something with liquid nitrogen um, without safety goggles, but, um, but I really, so I wanted to go just kind of revisit some interests of mine, and so that's why I did this. I'm going to do a quick overview of puppetry, um, more than the Muppets, as much as I do love the Muppets. Um, and this is an international group, so I imagine a lot of y'all know a lot about puppetry more than most people in the United States do, but puppetry encompasses, um, uh, it's thousands of years old, there's um, traditions all over the world um, from shadow puppetry, giant puppets, water puppets, buruku rod, um, hand puppets. Um, so, oh, that's not there. Um, but I, I just wanted to make sure that, um, you know, that I need more than just traditional hand puppets, just kind of the whole approach. Uh, if you want to learn more about puppetry, talk to me or go to Winema is a great organization or Jim Hansen Foundation. Um, so kind of that approach um, is how I frame things. So just humans using objects to tell a story. Um, often that'll be, means you're controlling sound, could mean you're controlling um, light, and I'm mentioning this because these are the things that we're going to control later with components. Um, and then, of course, motion. Um, and then all of this needs to be, again, using some sort of controller, which usually would be like your hand, string, rods, wires, um, again, huge depth of um, tradition around this. And then the big part about it that makes it fun for me is when you're connecting with a live audience. Um, when you can react to what people are saying and when you, they're clapping, you can do more of it. That's the fun part. Um, so when you're using electronics, there's kind of, th you know, these are, the, sorry, these, as I said, these are the components. You can do the sound, so buzzers, speakers, LEDs, displays, motors, electromagnets, whatever. Those are the things you're kind of compiling together. Um, so when you're kind of telling a story, oh, this is, there we go. So how, who's creating the story then if you're using components? Sometimes, a lot of times, there is a real human there puppeteering, so it's not really automated. Um, a lot of times, you need to do this when you have really large or heavy or complicated things, so there's still a person there somewhere controlling it. Um, then you also have the situation where the um, puppets or you know, animatronics are not at all responsive to the audience. So if you've ever been on like It's a Small World ride at Disney World or something, that thing just keeps going no matter what. There's no um, response happening there. I don't know if anyone ever went to Chuck E. Cheese in the 90s, but there used to be animatronics um, in this kid's restaurant that would just play um, no matter what you were doing. Um, and then now you can also do some 
interactive components uh, with you know, either manual switches, um, these are just some more <laughs> familiar things to some people, uh, or sensors where there's like a motion activated lawn de decoration or something at Halloween and it'll scream at you when you walk by. So those are kind of different ways, those are all different ways that I was thinking about building stuff as I was planning out how I was gonna approach um, controlling things with NERVs. Um, so of these approaches, um, a lot of building really complicated things with motors can get expensive really quickly. Um, and I also, you know, wanted to be able to have that feeling of interaction with humans and not just program something and stick it in my lawn and then kind of not do anything with it. So as I was exploring these options, the thing that was most exciting to me was using NERVS Livebook. Um, so, um, I'm assuming people here probably know a lot more about this than me, but you know, uh, Livebook is interactive uh, collaborative code notebook and Elixir um, for rapid prototyping implemented in Phoenix LiveView uh, by uh, Janssen Klosko and Jose Falim and many other people. Um, it is used usually not for animatronics, um, that, you know, acts on a neural networks and an X and machine learning and it's all these wonderful um, capabilities and Frank Hunliffe decided um, when it came out to make it available for NERVs. So now there's NERVs uh, live book, you burn it and you put it on your SD card, you put it into your Raspberry Pi or whatever you're using and you can use this um, to connect to devices which has been really fun. So I know a couple people have used this but let's see, I'm on my video, it is playing, maybe? Anyways, this is what it looks like when you loaded it onto your, um, on your machine. You can, there's, you know, it's like a blog. <laughs> it looks like blog posts you click through. The main limitation of it right now um, is that uh, you cannot install hex dependencies on it. So if you want extra libraries, then you uh, would have to put a, a request to put those in. So a lot of my examples are just things that are already there and are pretty simple. Um, but it's been a really fun tool to play with. Um, so why did I think this was a fun <laughs> thing to do? Well, I have young kids and um, they became really interested in what I was doing as soon as I had motors and things around the house. And so they didn't just want to like um, touch the motors, they wanted to be able to control them too. And so the fun thing about this is that if you're, this was something we did, if you have little kids and they can read, you can just kind of put the code in um, to a story. So that's kind of what we did. This is like the most basic example, right? Just blinking an LED, um, but you can kind of make it into a story. So um, let's see if my video is gonna go. So you write a story around it, you can rename things, and then you can have just like LEDs pop up. And this is just um, mixing in really simple, <laughs> you know, code example, really simple um, puppetry techniques but um, it becomes really fun and engaging for them as we do it together and was much more rewarding than just me making something and then being like, look at this cool thing I made. Um, then I think there's another one where we would just have lights blinking. Um, okay, so LED, fun with LEDs. Um, this is one example that uh, we worked on. Uh, motors also, uh, really simple motors, just ser um, some simple servos and things like a haptic little vibrating motor. You can, again, you're kind of writing a story and connecting things to it and putting code in. And uh, this is, a, I think a caterpillar is turning into a butterfly. So that goes from, I guess spoiled it, but um, if you keep watching. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> there it is. Um, and it's, it's uh, yeah, so those are a couple kind of fun examples. But you can, we do it with things that are around the house too, um, larger scale, these are just very small things you can just run off of um, a Raspberry Pi. Um, and so going back to um, the example of cutting into something, um, you know, with uh, NERVS Live book, you can kind of hide outputs. You can really just focus on code if you want to, or you can, you know, zoom out and see whatever number of instructions that you want. So what's nice about it is that, you know, if you're a kid or someone new to programming, you're not playing with, um, you know, kind of a overly simplified version of things. You can go in and learn as much as you want. It always reminds me if anyone has like babies or toddlers, they never want the toy phone, they want your real phone, you know? Um, and so it's kind of like that. They don't, if you want to learn how something works, you can actually use NERVS Livebook and really see what's going on as opposed to someone just giving you a, um, something and you don't think about how um, it's working. Um, so 
Um, yeah, so I guess my, my kind of challenge then is what are you curious about? Or is there someone in your life who is curious about software and maybe you might want to try using NERVS Live Book as a way to explore it? A lot of people do NERVS projects about all sorts of different things. Um, so for holiday decorating or gardening, costumes, there's really a huge amount of kind of hobby electronic stuff or it's out there that you can, you know, within a, a couple hours or not even, within five minutes, um, hook up and start controlling. And it's just kind of a fun way to approach things as opposed to just thinking every time you want something you have to buy it and then just you're stuck with whatever um, hardware or code is on it at the time. You can kind of design it yourself, be a little bit more creative, um, and it's very low stakes because uh, it's just, you know, fun stuff around your house. Um, so I know some people think that, okay, well, it's just, this is never going to work, we need to stick with C, um, but it's fun to try out new things, and I think that uh, once um, you are able to, I can't remember what I was going to say with this GIF, but I just really like, it's really like Oscar the Grouch is my favorite, so I think it was something about how, you know, come out of your world, and I don't know, I just like Oscar the Grouch, so, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, so explore, um, you know, if you want to learn more about nerves, there's tons to learn on the nerves. Uh, you know, follow Nerves Project on Twitter. There's uh, podcasts and videos, and um, you know, just get out there and um, explore. That's it. Thank you so much, Flora. That was a lot of fun. I'm actually really excited to maybe try nerves. I'm a little intimidated, but you're <laughs> inspiring me. Um, we do have one question from a virtual attendee. We'll start there, and then if people have questions in the room, just throw up a hand. This is a question from Zach. Do you typically use Raspberry Pi as your hardware platform? That's what I use, mm -hmm. for sure. But they are hard to find, and I hear good things about BeagleBone and Mango Pi as well. But Raspberry Pi has been good for me. Cool, mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, supply chain uh, notwithstanding, get a Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. Any questions from folks in the room? I'm going to go all the way over there now. Hello. Uh, thanks for your talk. Uh, I would like to know what is the difference from the, the Nerves live book from the, the Normon live book and like how, how it helps you on your projects? Um, well, with, when you use NERVS Live Book, uh, it is, you just burn it onto a, uh, an SD card and plug it into the Raspberry Pi, and it um, mostly is for connecting to devices. So I haven't, um, yeah, I don't work with neural networks. That's a great question that someone who does could probably answer, but it's a lot of the same functions as Live Book, I think. But it's a great question. I have to think about it. Excellent. Thank you. Any other questions from folks in the room? Coming through. Let's do, just because he's closer, then we're going to make <laughs> my way over. All right. As we can. Sure. Thank you so much for your talk. Um, what are you going to build next? With this, like, <laughs> puppetry? this is so cool. Um, well, right now, my kids really want to build stuff, so I'm focusing on writing some code notebooks that like a seven-year-old could read, so she wants to... Uh, I mean, I think my challenge now is libraries, uh, just because I can control motors, so that's where I'll be practically focusing my time on for a while. But it would be do, fun to do a lot more with um, sensors and automating things. But really, the most engaging thing for my family has been just controlling stuff straight from the live book. So just getting more and more things hooked up to it is kind of my plan. Um, so I guess I'm curious, have you tried like uh, the Python equivalent of like controlling Raspberry Pis? And if so, like how would you compare that with NURBS? I'm like a super beginner with like the embedded stuff, so I guess I'm curious. Yeah, I haven't worked a lot with Python. I mean, the Jupyter Notebook is, you know, a really robust um, tool that I have not used. I think that Python is a lot easier for hobby electronic just because almost everything you Google, the first tutorial is going to be a Python example. So it's definitely a challenge. Um, but I just really wanted to use Elixir, so that's why I pushed through. And I think that the benefits of being able to use Nerves Live Book has been worth it for me. Um, 
but yeah, definitely a lot more documentation and examples for Python, for sure. Got it, thank you. <laughs> and we had a question over here. Hi, as someone who used to work in childcare, and you say you do this a lot with your kids, I was wondering if you were ever planning on doing tutorials for people to do this with their kids or expand this more to bring nerves more into a kid-friendly light? Yeah, I think that would be, that is, when you ask, that is something I was, I think I just need to get in a, in a better space with my, Yes, that would be awesome to do down the road. Um, right now, my I just need a, it's not in a place where even my kids can follow it yet, but I just, I feel like a lot of the STEM, STEAM education stuff has become really commercialized and kind of gimmicky. And so what I like about this is that it's not just like do a $30 subscription and you get like a box of parts once a month. It's just you actually have a lot more agency in creating cool stuff. So I think that would be a really fun thing to do. But um, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot out there. Yeah, it be fun. All right, any last questions? We do have more questions. Hi, so you mentioned that you're self-taught. Mm -hmm. Why did you pick Elixir? Um, I was working in a company with friends who are Elixir developers who made it sound really fun. <laughs> and I went to a conference. Oh, I, for I forgot that last picture of my notes, oh, sorry. I went to a conference. Uh, I went to the big Elixir this year, and I saw um, John Karstens give a talk about nerves, and I just thought it was, I thought it sounded fun. I meant to say thank you to him and Frank and Nerves team and many other people who have been supportive um, of this along the way. All right, um, I think we're out of time. All right, let's do one more. <laughs> this is such a fun topic. And I have the microphone, so I can decide. <laughs> oh, I do you not. <laughs> What examples were most helpful for you? And you'd mentioned you're still working with some of the motor logic. Uh, what examples would be helpful for you in the live book? Um, I think um, higher voltage motors, uh, that is the thing that I was working. So what was most helpful? Um, I mean, the, the ones that are already in there, uh, like I said, is uh, there's one on servos and LEDs. Those were helpful. Um, I think that, yeah, the, the place for, for growth is definitely just more motor control, for sure. Which I, I, I think is something Raspberry Pi is not the best at, so, um, but yeah. All right, we've got one more question. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for the talk. Um, somebody else with children who are creative and like to stick jammy fingers in places they shouldn't do. Are there any risks of burning things out if they're misconnected, etc.? As I can see that being one of the first kids, the things my kids set fire to. Yeah, I mean, that's why those um, examples are all just like three volt things um, that, yeah. And, and I, I am not an expert in this by any way, but I would just run things off of battery packs and not, um, plug anything into the wall. Uh, but someone with more experience might have more in-depth safety gear. But that's pretty much been it. And you don't have to solder, right? You can just do things with the breadboard, too. All right, well, thank you again, Flora, for such a fun and inspiring talk. And thank you to our listeners. And a last round of applause for Flora. Yeah.